it's so hard to predict the future because I think, um, you know, when I think back, back in the uh, late 80s, that we never imagined that we would be doing what we're doing today. It, doing neuroimaging back then was so painstaking, so time consuming. You know, we didn't have these SPM and FSL and ways of, of um, analyzing data very quickly. We did everything manually and it seemed like such a, a chore and that it would always be a small group of people doing this because uh, it took so long and, and so much uh, energy. Um, and now uh, we just have the opportunity to grow incredibly because we have these incredible data analytic tools. Um, I think that's one thing that's changing. One of the things that I'd really like to see um, happening and I do believe is happening is that I believe that brain imaging generally is going to be incorporated more and more in clinical science. I think that um, looking at um, brain structure, brain function, even resting state function, as the dependent measures or even outcome measures of clinical trials is going to increasingly become the norm. Um, uh, I think that the, the current state of the art, if you can call it that in clinical trials, to, to, to try a new uh, intervention and wait to see if somebody develops a bad disease and dies, for example, is a really bad way to conduct a clinical trial. And imaging has the opportunity to change that dramatically and, and look at markers that are so early and also so much more closely related to the biology of these disorders that I think that we're going to become very integral to uh, clinical science in the future. Professor Brookheimer, thank you very much. You're very welcome.